Hello, Hi Guru community. First off, I just want to say thank you so much. We just kicked off and already there's so much support. I'm so humbled. The Hi Guru team is super humbled as well. I have such a passion for medical education, teaching students USMLE Step 1, augmenting their knowledge. And it would mean so much to us if you could spend just a couple seconds liking our Facebook page, following us on Twitter, staying subscribed to our YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be delivering so much content and hopefully this content will be very applicable to you and augment your knowledge and understanding. You know, throughout this endeavor, guys, we are going to be learning together and I'm going to be with you each and every step of the way. So get in touch with me. Any ideas you have, questions, feedback, it would really truly mean the world to me. Um, so before I get on to this content, I just want to say April 21st, Cleveland, Ohio, you got to be there. We are going to have our first High Guru event. The USMLE Step 1 Review. This is a one-day jam-packed review. I'm making this based on the USMLE content outline. It's going to be questions-based. It's going to be application-based. We're going to focus on drilling pharmacology in your mind. I want to take all of these concepts, all of the breadth of the material, and make it simple for you. So please take the time to register, highguru.com. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns, Hey, even if you want to say, yo, I want to actually review this topic on April 21st, let me know. I would absolutely love to tailor this to your understanding and your knowledge. So I want to kick off my content quest with one of my favorite subjects, cardiac cycle and cardiac physiology. I think it's super important before you move on to pathology. So let me know what you think. I know this is the first video, more content to come. And again, really from the bottom of my heart, thanks so much for joining me on this journey. You've probably seen the cardiac cycle in pictures like this, like this, and like this, and memorizing each of the lines probably just made your head spin. In today's lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to master the cardiac cycle in three steps. We're going to have active recall of the cardiac events, we're going to construct a table and we're going to apply these on the cardiac cycle diagram so that for the USMLE, you master cardiac physiology with understanding of this diagram. So in order to master the cardiac cycle, you have to break it down in various phases. And each of these phases have pertinent high yield USMLE points. Let's actively recall the different phases of the cardiac cycle before we go into the nuances of each of the phases. So the first phase that we see is going to be isovolumetric contraction. And this is the phase in which the volume does not change. However, the pressure in the left ventricle is going to slowly start to increase. The next phase of the cardiac cycle is where the ventricular volume curve is actually going to have a rapid decline. And this phase is going to be rapid ejection. After rapid ejection, we see isovolumetric relaxation. A good pattern that I use to remember it is that rapid ejection is going to be sandwiched between the two isovolumetric phases, isovolumetric contraction being before rapid ejection and isovolumetric relaxation being after the ejection phase. After isovolumetric relaxation, we see the next phase is going to be rapid inflow. This is where the left ventricular volume is going to start to increase. Rapid inflow is going to have two phases where you have rapid inflow and then a reduced inflow, and this reduced inflow is known as the diastasis. The final phase that we are going to talk about is going to be atrial systole. Atrial systole is going to be the last stage of diastole, and so make sure to keep that in your mind, that atrial systole is not part of systole, it is actually the last phase of diastole. The key curve that you have to remember with atrial systole is this A wave right here, and this A wave can be elevated in times of mitral stenosis, and we'll get to that question later on. So let's look at the first phase, isovolumetric ventricular contraction. Let's answer the questions. What is the heart doing at this time? The ventricles are contracting. If the ventricles are contracting, what does this say about pressure? The pressure is going to increase. Remember, isovolumetric means that the volume is not changing. On the EKG, what wave does this correlate to? This phase correlates to the QRX complex. Now, this is a very high yield point for you to know as we go through the cardiac cycle. Remember, the electrical activity of the heart always precedes mechanical activity of the heart. So the QRS complex 
is going to be correlated to ventricular depolarization. And this ventricular depolarization is going to occur first before we have ventricular contraction. Again, we are now in the first phase of systole, isovolumetric ventricular contraction. What valves are going to be open during this time? Well, all of the valves are going to be closed because we don't really need to eject anything just yet. We're just building up pressure, not changing volume. What heart sound will you hear clinically? You'll hear the first heart sound during the beginning of this phase. Let's think of it one more time in a picture. So in this picture, just to orient you, you have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. After diastole, you had blood flowing from the left atrium to the left ventricle. And at the end of diastole, the left ventricle is done receiving the blood. So you're going to hear this mitral valve right here shut. The mitral valve is going to shut. And that shutting of the mitral valve is going to be correlated as the first heart sound on your cardiac exam. Let's wrap this up in a table. The phase that we're gonna look at, isovolumetric contraction, the major events, the ventricles are contracting and they're increasing in pressure. However, the volume is staying the same. On the EKG, this correlates to the QRS complex. The valve that is going to be open is actually none because the mitral valve just closed and the first heart sound you will hear during the beginning of this phase. As you can see on this curve, we have the ventricular pressure that is slowly increasing and the first heart sound which is pictured right here on our phonocardiogram. The next phase that we see is rapid ventricular ejection. This is the fun part of systole. The ventricles are contracting. Pressure in the ventricle is going to be greater than the pressure in the aorta. And now we are going to have blood flowing from the left ventricle to the aorta. The aortic pressure is going to be increasing because now we have blood going from the left ventricle into the aorta. What is happening with ventricular volume during this time? Well, as the blood is leaving, the ventricular volume is actually decreasing. And on the EKG, what wave is this correlating to? This is correlating to the ST segment. Remember, the ST segment is going to be between the QRS complex and the T wave. And this ST segment is basically the electrical activity between ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. Which valve is open during this time? Well, in order for the blood to flow, we need the aortic valve to be open. So as you can see on our diagram here, we are seeing now the blood going from the left ventricle through this big great vessel, remembering that the aortic valve is going to be open. During rapid ventricular ejection, the ventricular pressure is the highest. Our aortic pressure is increasing. On our table, what is this going to correlate to? The ST segment and the valves that are going to be open is the aortic valve. So on our curve, here we see both of these pressures are actually going to be increasing as blood is going to be squeezed from the left ventricle into the aorta. And now we see that the ventricular volume is decreasing. Let's go on to the next phase, isovolumetric relaxation. Let's ask ourselves, what is the heart doing? Well, the ventricular pressure is decreasing. Remember, isovolumetric contraction, the pressure was increasing, and now we are going to have relaxation, so the ventricular pressure is going to be decreasing. Isovolumetric. The volume is not changing. What valve just closed during this phase? Remember, after rapid ejection, the heart says, whew, I am done ejecting the blood from the left ventricle into the aorta. And so now the beginning of this phase is going to be defined by the aortic valve closing. What heart sound will you hear now that the aortic valve is closed? The second heart sound. As you can see here on our diagram, that during this phase, we are going to have valves that are all closed and the the pressure is going to go down because we are relaxing. Just to sum it up, isovolumetric ventricular relaxation, the ventricles are relaxing, the ventricular pressure is going to decrease, the aortic valve just closed during the beginning of this phase, and the heart sound that we hear is the second heart sound. This small little sliver of the cardiac cycle is what we're going to focus on. We see that our ventricular pressure is going to go down and we are going to have no change in our volume. The next phase that we see is rapid ventricular filling. Just like how rapid ejection was the sexy part of systole, rapid ventricular filling is the sexy part of diastole. So what is the heart doing? The ventricles are going to passively be filling with blood. And what does this tell you about volume? Ventricular volume is going to be increasing now that blood is flowing from the left atrium to the left ventricle. 
The ventricular pressure is actually going to be low at first, and this is a high yield concept for you to know because this low pressure is going to cause a gradient from the left atrium to the left ventricle so that we can get enough preloading. What valve is going to be open during this phase? As blood is going to be flowing, we have the mitral valve that is going to be open. When we have rapid ventricular filling into a very dilated left ventricle, we are going to hear the third heart sound. And this is going to be very important for you to know in patients who have dilated cardiomyopathy or congestive heart failure where the left ventricle is very dilated. To illustrate that point, let's look on our diagram. Blood is going to be filling from the left atrium to the left ventricle. This mitral valve right here is actually going to be open. And if we have a patient who is going to have a dilated heart, you are going to hear the third heart sound, which correlates to blood flowing from the left atrium into a dilated left ventricle. Let's synthesize this on the table. We have rapid ventricular filling. The major event, we're going to have passive flow from the atria to the ventricles. Our ventricular pressure is going to be low and constant in order to create a gradient. The valve that is going to be open during this time is the mitral valve, and the heart sound that you can hear is the third heart sound. Let me point out some high yield portions here. The AV valve is going to open, your ventricular volume is going to increase, and here is the third heart sound that you will hear. The final phase of the cardiac cycle is atrial systole. Now, do not get confused. Atrial systole is actually a part of diastole. What is the heart doing during this time? The atria is contracting, and it is getting the final amount of preload into the left ventricle. On the EKG, what wave does this correlate to? This correlates to the P wave in which the atria are going to be depolarizing and this depolarization is going to precede the mechanical activity being atrial systole. Clinically, what can you hear on cardiac exam? This is a time when you can hear the fourth heart sound. You can hear the fourth heart sound in a patient who has some sort of left ventricular hypertrophy because the fourth heart sound is going to represent the atria contracting against a stiff, non-compliant ventricle. To illustrate this, let's take a patient who is going to have hypertension and the left ventricle is going to have to squeeze so hard against that increased aortic pressure such that when you have the left atrium contracting against this left ventricle, because the compliance of this left ventricle is really poor, you are going to hear the fourth heart sound which is going to represent the atria contracting into a stiff, non-compliant ventricle. During atrial systole, we see that the atria is going to contract. It represents the P wave. The mitral valve is going to be open, and we will hear the fourth heart sound. As you can see here, the atrial pressure is going to be the highest. If you have a patient who has mitral stenosis, what do you think is going to happen to the A wave? the A wave is actually going to be increased. And this means that your left atrial pressure is also going to be elevated. So these are very key points for you to know, especially for questions on the USMLA.